Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0, the mod suite for realism overhaul setup of mods for Kerbal Space Program. Um, last time I talked about building a new launcher so that we could land something on the moon and this is what I've come up with. Uh, we'll cover our little lander guy first. Uh, he's got two of the basic probe cores, some antennas, all five science experiments action grouped. Uh, I don't have landing gear yet, so we're going to improvise with these uh, octagonal struts powered by a single one kilonewton thruster. And to deorbit and hopefully get us on our landing stage, we have this uh, solid rocket engine, which we'll be using without avionics because it greatly exceeds our weight limit. So that's kind of the cross your fingers and hope for the best kind of moment. And just below that, this is going to be the second half of our transfer stage and hopefully our lunar orbit insertion stage. It is pretty much a revamped version of the AJ-10 upper stage we were using on our previous RA-8 launcher. Uh, the only real difference here is, is that the fairing size has been up to 2 meters, instead of, or up to 3 meters, sorry, instead of 2 on the previous version, necessitating some changes in the tank style. Um, it's got a big whopping battery in it, a couple of solar panels to help, mit help mitigate that battery drain on the trip out to the moon. Uh, below that, we have an entirely new stage powered by the uh, S1.5400 series. Uh, two of them. They are a great upper stage, closed cycle uh, Russian engine. Uh, we've got some RCS on there because these have five restarts and so they will be finishing our orbital insertion and starting our translunar injection burn. Uh, below that we've got a slightly bigger stage powered by an RD-210 which is the uh, upper stage, another Russian upper stage engine. And below that we have another large stage powered by an RD-235 series engine. Uh, these are one of the new ones we unlocked. These are kind of beastly. So beastly, in fact, that we needed four more of them down here on our launch stage to get us off the pad. So this is what I'm calling the KR-1A. The one indicator will be for our lunar trip. And that's going to be our new rocket. I, I did a couple of test flights with it, and all of them had failures. So I've started research on all of these engines, and hopefully, now that we're actually going to be launching one of these, we'll have some better results. So um, I've put in the order for them. We're going to go ahead and roll one out to the pad and try to make our moonshot. And I will see you guys out on the launch pad. Okay, and we are here at the launch pad, and we've got our target with the moon set up and established, and we are like on top of our our need to launch. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and do it. Three, two, ignition. One, very slow one. All right, ignition looks good, and lift off. Whoa.
ignition. And the light is good. Just a little bit of wobbliness there. We are back on it. We can go ahead and start trying to flatten this out a bit. We've already got our apogee out of the atmosphere. Just a couple more kilometers altitude. We'll go ahead and ditch these fairings. Nice dusk time launch. Past the carbon line, we're good for fairing setup and boot sequence. We'll extend the antennas and turn on the telemetry of the uh, probe cores. Although we don't really need them, I may be shutting them off later. It really depends on our draw of everything wise. Okay, I'm not gonna mess with that. I need to pay attention. Yeah, see, look, I'm not paying attention and I not finish my pitch program. I guess as it would be considered a yaw program in this particular instance. Alright, and we have a contract to science some data from around Kerbin. We're just going to go ahead and do that now. It gives us a good chance to do an instrument check. Uh, atmosphere is good. Uh, telemetry is good. Temperature is good. Geiger counter. Gravity scan. Micrometeorite detector. All of our experiments there have worked, and it looks like we just got paid for the contract. Contract complete, three grand. Awesome. Alright, I should have been flattening out a bit on this one, but I did not. I was really hoping to keep our apogee at around 200 kilometers. It does not look like that's going to be a thing. We're probably going to be closer to 300 by the time we hit orbit. No big deal. Above the horizon for us right now. Right, we can go ahead and get rid of that. Alright. Stage set. And ignition. Alright, looks like our light is good. We're going to go ahead and pitch up a bit. We need to buy a little bit more time to Apogee. Don't necessarily need that number to fall, but I need it to, or to rise, sorry. But I need it to not fall very quickly. We've got, yeah, three minutes burn time on this. Uh, just a little bit more. 30 degree, yeah. I should have just come in a little higher and built up my time to Apogee, but I don't have very much experience flying this rocket yet. So, then there's that. Alright. Toggling action group 2, which will disable the RCS thrusters on our AJ-10 stage. So that when we need the RCS thrusters, they will just be on this, our beginning of our transfer stage. Alright. And our time to Apogee is going up again, so we can start to pitch down. Try to mitigate some of these losses a bit. Okay, that looks like it's going to hold it steady. Nope, still increasing. Excellent. So let's just go ahead and put it in at a solid 10 degree. That should cause it to fall. Yep, all right. Let's time warp through it. See how long we get before we have to change heading again. It's working quite well. Yep, there it goes. Starting to rise. So, let's pitch down. This delicate ballet. All right. About five degrees. Rising again. And we're coming up on stage step anyway, so... Pitch it straight at the horizon. Yep, there it is. Sip. Ignition. Uh-oh. That's a problem. 
Whoops. Okay, well, we're going to have to burn a little fuel off course here. So we can get our controls back. Shit, did I really not put a probe core on that? Uh-oh. Yeah, I guess I didn't. I was relying on the one from up here, and it's too small. All right, avionics unlocked. We're, we are good to go. Whew. Well, that was a minor tragedy. RCS on. Test our RCS thrusters. All right. And none of the other ones are firing, and that's perfect. The only 50 liters of hydrazine. Whatever we don't dump on this, we're going to dump on the way out to the moon. Every little bit of thrust helps. Now, 235. I guess my estimate of 300 kilometer uh, perigee was uh, a little overzealous. No big deal. I'll take it. Get ready for engine shutdown. Shut down. 235 by 157. I will take that. And just as... Oh, man. Orienting this thing would help if I was not in linear mode. Yes, it would. We're going to pitch our panels towards the sun. We're seeing a 0.36 drain on our batteries as of current. I don't think we're going to be able to eliminate that drain, but we can try to help mitigate it at least a bit. Alright, well we got it down to 0 0.33. That's not too bad, really. And... Alright, we will shut down. What are you doing? Alright, we're going to turn SAS off. We're going to turn RCS off. Do the time warp shuffle. Alright, and so, that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for hanging out with me for a pretty cool launch. I'm glad everything worked. And next time, we will not be going to the moon. Because we have a different launch in mind. So, uh, thanks for hanging out. Until then, I will see you next time.